news of a mysterious crashed disk puts the world's focus on Roswell, New Mexico. This was too good to be true. We couldn't really believe a story like this that, that it really was authentic. But within hours of those first shocking reports comes a flurry of high-level military interest, strange shipments to other air bases, and fear. For people like Major Jesse Marcel, it's the beginning of a conspiracy to cover up what really happened at Roswell. Marcel is ordered to escort the wreckage, first to Fort Worth Army Airfield in Texas, and then onto Wright Airfield in Ohio. Why Wright Field? That's where captured enemy equipment normally went. Wright Air Development Center is there, and they take things apart and find out how they're made. In Hangar 84 at Roswell Army Airfield, the wreckage is boxed up and loaded onto a B-29 airplane. Personnel report seeing a procession of people carrying boxes of strange-looking debris, and something even more ominous, another flight, this one carrying bodies. The bodies were taken to the hospital first, and supposedly then this is where the C-54 was brought and they loaded up and he flew from here. At about the same time, the local undertaker in Roswell receives a strange call from the base asking about the availability of child-sized coffins and embalming techniques for bodies left outdoors. Later, he runs into a panicked nurse at the base who tells him she witnessed an alien autopsy. I knew the lady quite well and she said, look Glenn, she said, she was screaming, get out of here, get out of here as fast as you can because you are going to get in a lot of trouble. She describes what she saw in detail. The heads were very large. They were pliable like a newborn baby. The description of the bodies is pretty consistent by anyone who claims that they have seen them. Kind of grayish to grayish green with uh, a large head, large dark uh, black eyes. But it's the wreckage that would soon spark charges of a government cover-up. When Marcel and his strange cargo arrive in Texas, Brigadier General Roger Ramey, head of the 8th Air Force, is waiting to inspect the debris. The general asks Marcel to step into a nearby map room to show where it was found. When they return, the debris is gone, allegedly switched with material from what appears to be a common weather balloon. According to uh, Marcel in his last interview, there were some wrapped packages there. He says they hid the debris from the uh, photographers who came in, but what, what was in the picture was just staged. It was just, you know, it was just the cover story. The press snapped several photos of various officials posing with the debris, including Jesse Marcel. He kind of looks kind of sheepish like, yeah, they're okay guys, I'll hold it up here, but this, yeah, this is uh, not what I saw. Years later, Stan Friedman believes he's confirmed the cover story when he gets a signed affidavit from the General's Chief of Staff, who says the weather balloon story was to divert the attention of the press. And it comes on direct orders from the Deputy Commander of Strategic Air Command in Washington, D.C. He gave him three orders. I want you to send some of that wreckage here today with one of your Colonel Couriers. I want you to get the press off our backs. I don't care how you do it. And I don't want you ever to talk about it again, not even with your buddy, Roger Ramey. The alleged cover story works. Just a day after the fantastic tale broke, the media and the public buy into the new story. People really believed in the military back then. It was right after World War II, and the military had saved us, you know, from fascism. After the photo op, the wreckage is flown to a new unknown destination, while Marcel is ordered to return to Roswell and forget the entire incident. 
when he came back and he had my mother and I kind of together, he said, you know, guys, we're not to talk about this anymore. Treat it like a non-event. Didn't happen. So may not forget about it, but don't talk about it, not even with your friends. And we didn't. Others are also allegedly pressured to keep silent or change their stories. A few days after the photo op, rancher Mac Brazel pays a visit to Frank Joyce at the radio station. He said, I found out after I left here that, that what I told you out on the ranch was not accurate. What the crash was, was a weather balloon. But Joyce says he uncovers Brazel's fib when he asks what happened to the alien bodies. And I said, you know, it brings up what people are talking about recently, the stories you hear about little green men. And in a quiet voice, he said, they weren't green. I think Brazel may very well have seen the bodies. But again, that would be another reason for putting a thumb down on it.